<laughs> These sorts of industrial accidents can be incredibly damaging to your workforce. We strongly recommend you invest in some ultrasonic sensors. These devices can be fitted at the end of your railway sidings and work in the same way as a car's parking sensor or a bat's sonar squeak. The sensor simply needs four wires to get running. A 5 volt and ground wire to your Arduino and two wires to your digital inputs, one trigger and one echo wire. You'll also need some bricks to mount it to your track. Here's one I made earlier. Arrange your bricks so that they look like a broken robot. Build a central column and two side legs next to the rails. and join them together with a plate. Add a buffer and four upright clips to hold the base of the sensor. Add two side pillars then use a side clip to grab the edge of the sensor. This clip should also allow some movement so that you can tilt your sensor up and down. Add a top plate to hold it all together. Connect your new sensor buffer to your track and you're good to go. We also need to get the sensor wired up. Now there's a good chance your siding will be a long way away from your Arduino, so you need to think about how to make your wires reach. Since the ultrasonic sensor has four pins, you can use an old PC internal audio cable. These were used to add CD sounds to computers about 20 years ago, so they're easy to find and very cheap. However, they're not very long, so here's a better idea. Get yourself some flexible telephone cable, the soft thin ribbon type. It's got four wires inside which you can easily convert to a four pin socket. To do this you'll need these crimp clips. They're 2.54mm gold pin clips and they fit inside these plastic sockets. They're available from any electronic store or online and just crimp on the wire using pliers. That way you can make massive 10 meter cables like this one cheaply and easily. This is our code block to read the sensor. I've kept this really simple so that we can focus on how the ultrasonic sensor works. We're just defining the train motor pins, the light sensor and two pins for our ultrasonic sensor. And we've got a simple set of variables to store the light sensor value a counter, and the light sensor level. The setup section has two new values. Our ultrasonic sensor's trigger pin is an output, and the echo pin is an input. We're also fixing the speed of the train here, but not the direction. In the loop function, all we do is call up another function called move train forward. This does exactly what you'd expect. It moves the train forward, and it reads the light sensor. When the light sensor is triggered, it adds 1 to our counter, just like the previous tutorial. Now when the light counter gets to 3, we switch to another function called go to siding. If we run back to the variables at the start of the code, we can see that we're starting with a counter of 1. So when we power up the train, it'll go past the light sensor once without stopping, making our counter 2. And on the third time, it'll switch to the go to siding function. And that's where we start checking our ultrasonic sensor. This code block is how we read the sensor. We set two variables called duration and distance. Then we make sure the trig pin is low for a tiny amount of time. Then we set it high for 10 milliseconds before turning it off again. That sends out a big clean pulse of ultrasonic noise 
from one side of our sensor. Then we use the pulse in command to take a reading from our echo side of the sensor. As soon as the pulse is detected, we save that time as duration. This duration is going to be a weird abstract number, so we convert it to centimeters by dividing the time by two, because the sound wave went out and came back, and then we divide again by 29.1. We save the result as a value called distance, and that's how we get a useful reading from the ultrasonic sensor. And what do we do with that reading? I've decided that when the sensor detects something 27 centimeters away, which is two track lengths, we stop the train and pause for five seconds. I've used delay here to keep this code simple, but remember, you really ought to use a millis timer so that you don't lock up the whole Arduino. Once the delay ends, we add one to the light counter. Our light counter was three, now it's on four, so it will automatically move forward again via the move train forward function. That way, the train will go straight past the light again, taking the counter to five, and after a complete loop, the counter reaches six, and we start reversing the train again. And here's our setup. We've got our Arduino driving our motor controller, and we've got one light sensor and one ultrasonic sensor. We've also got some motorized points from the previous tutorial, and you can make use of those if you're using two ultrasonic sensors, one on each siding. We're keeping it simple for now. As we power up the train, the train sets off and goes past the light sensor once. It will do a full loop until it hits the sensor again. And then it reverses back into the siding. As it approaches the buffers, it's detected by the ultrasonic sensors, which shuts down the track for 5 seconds, and then moves forward. And it will repeat this loop over and over. Now you can also combine this program with the previous tutorial on motorized switches. Just add a second ultrasonic sensor and use the light counter to decide whether the points switch left or right. That way, you can run two trains on the same loop one after the other just by switching the points. Try it out yourself and let me know how it works by leaving a comment below. Thanks for watching.